Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the sixth Friday webinar. My name is Hiu Fung, and uh, I'm a historian of Vietnam and uh, a lecturer in Vietnamese cultures and Southeast Asian studies here at the University of Michigan. We will begin now. We would like to uh, remind you that uh, we would appreciate you will submit questions uh, with the Q&A function during or at the end of the presentation. First of all, I would like to thank our uh, UM Coast sponsors, the International Institute and Department of Asian uh, Language and uh, Cultures. Uh, and this event uh, can't have uh, be happened without the general support through a funding of US Departments of Education, um, National uh, Resource Center Title VI grant. As just a reminder, uh, we would like to welcome you to the last the webinar of this semester, uh, which is scheduled in December the 3rd on Friday at noon. Um, in that lecture, uh, Professor Jenny Goldstein um, from Cornell University will talk about the role of a strategic ignorance in Indonesian agrarian development. Now, without further ado, I'm so excited to introduce you to um, our guest speaker today, Dr. Gui Ha Huang Nguyen. Um, Dr. Nguyen is a postdoctoral associate at Yale University Macmillan Center for Southeast Asian Studies. She um, received her PhD in cinema and media studies from the University of Southern California in uh, 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 2020. Her current research has covered a wide range of topics, including film, uh, post-colonial historiography, gender and feminist studies, transnational film and media industry, environmental humanities, and global Asian cinema. She has been working on um, a manuscript, which is really long awaiting um, uh, uh, research on women in Vietnamese revolutionary cinema. Now, this is manuscript uh, about um, women's lived experience, emotion, and agencies on and off screen in wartime Vietnam. Well, I would like to add that I have known uh, Gui Ha for many years since we both work in Vietnam. Uh, when she began her research on Vietnamese uh, revolutionary cinema in Vietnam, as you also know that later in the United States, Film studies was only an emerging uh, field of study in Vietnam. So over the past decade, Gui Ha has not only pursued her study and research in the United States, but she has also been very active in promoting uh, film studies in her home country. Today, Dr. Nguyen will talk about New Queen Stadium, the remaking of womanhood on screen creative labor and contemporary Vietnamese film industry. It's my pleasure to welcome you today to our center, even virtually. Uh, Gui Ha, the floor is all yours. Thank you so much, uh, Hio, for your generous introduction. Um, and thank you. Thank you everyone for joining uh, my lecture today. Before I start, I would like to thank um, the Center for Southeast Asian Studies at the University of Michigan for inviting me to give a talk. And um, uh, it is my honor here to, to be here and share my research on gender and Vietnamese um, cinema for you all today. And um, one more time, I would like to express my uh, gratitude for you who you know run all of the documents um, and all the processes so that I can um, I can be here and 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 share my, and and, and uh, share my um, research. Thank you. Now I will um, uh, share my screen and um, and um, start my uh, talk immediately. Okay. 
So my talk today is entitled New Green Stardoms, Remaking Womanhood Creative Labor and the Contemporary Vietnamese Film Industry. It examines the prolific film career of New Green, which spans over 40 years in order to reflect on the continuity and the shifts in the representation of women on screen marked by the turning point of the Vietnamese government adopting the market economy known as reform or doi mới in 1986. I examined several films to illustrate the ambivalence of Vietnamese womanhood suggested by new queen characters on screen over the course of Vietnamese film history. Still, this talk is not going to dwell on the details of her acting styles or film aesthetics. Of course, we can discuss that later if you would like to, and I will share some clips, and I'm happy to discuss more in detail about the film aesthetics, but um, save it for, for, for the Q&A, okay? Instead, New Queen Stardom serves as a text to provide insight into the complex notion of Vietnamese womanhood as presented on and off screen in reform Vietnam. Nhu Quyen, born in 1954, and her full name is Nhu Quyen, was born to an aesthetic family in Hanoi. Her grandfather was a well-known Cải Lương theater, that is the um, Cải Lương is a new type of modern um, theater opera in Vietnam, and her parents were Tiêu Lang and Kim Xuân, a famous uh, Cải Lương couple in Chuông Vàng or Golden um, Bell Chuk. Her mother, Kim Xuân, played a second main role in Ki Hoa that is a very, very famous and successful commercial film in 1954. Um, following the family tradition, Nhu Quyen studied Cải Lương or modern opera in 1970 and then worked for Golden Chuk. She was cut for the film Song to the Front, that is her debut in 1970, 1973 by Chen and then cast as Nick in the revolutionary classic, we will meet again or Lin Hen Lai Lin, that is a very uh, big and successful film in Vietnam. And later, um, also the revolutionary film is Holiday, that is directed by Mike Zip. Her career thrived in the immediate post war years, building her fame for memorable films such as The First Love, Moi Tinh Dau, Hanoi Moi Chim Lam Po, or Hanoi in the Birds Nesting Season in 1978, Hivong Cuối Last Hope in 1978, just give you a sense of how she was so active in, you know, um, post-war Vietnam era. Like many actors of her time, Yu Quyen character uh, career resided in the decade after the reform of 1986, when the Vietnamese film industry changed its mode of production, distribution, exhibition from government finance support to mainly privatization in response to the market-oriented economy. In the mid-1990s, New Queen found its way to re-enter filmmaking by playing minor but important roles in Vietnamese filmmaking, a transnational collaboration, and the new and in many films by new um, young Vietnamese filmmakers in 2000s. The, as a big star, emerging with a talented new generation of actors in the mid-1970s, right before the nation's unification in 1975, New Queen's career provides insight into Vietnamese film history and its multiple crossroads with transmedia and transnational cinemas. In chasing New Queen's films, I wish to shed light on post-reform Vietnamese cinema with a focus on two aspects of gender. The change first, the change of gender image on screen and their space, their place in industry. This take is, and second, their place in the industry. This take is my effort to depart from the mainstream historiography, which tends to check, canonize films, historical periods, and films by well known prominent female directors, such as Dang Nhat Ninh or Trần Văn Thủy for post reform Vietnam. New Queen characters on screen and her career interweave with the broader national and institutional history of Vietnamese cinema from wartime when film was centrally controlled enterprise 
to a later variety of government governing forms, including privatization and finally to transnational filmmaking. In this regard, her stardom has to understand the film industry, film history, and creative labor in a profound sense that is often obscured by scholarship in the West and receive little, um, little engagement from Vietnamese scholars. My talk, we have a three parts. The first one provides a brief overview of the uh, history of Vietnamese cinema with a focus on the reform era after 1986, within the focus of this lecture. The second part will analyze the shifts in the continuities and representation of womanhood embodied by new queen characters in post-reform cinema. And finally, I will discuss the creative label embodied by new queen amidst the transnational filmmaking landscape to show you the material and gendered dimensions of label in Vietnamese film history. Okay, so um, this is uh, the slide, just give you a, a, a glimpse of, you know, her prolific um, acting career, which uh, spans over, I think, five decades um, of Vietnamese cinema. And this is some uh, poster or the DVD covers uh, of the film that she plays, that is not all, but then um, at least give you a sense of like, like, like how she looks like and um, what kind of film, a sense of the genre of films that she played. Okay, now let's dive into the first part, the Vietnamese film industry and an overview. I will uh, give it really brief. Vietnamese, oh sorry, the French introduced cinema to Vietnam in the 19th century. During this time, the French controlled production, distribution, and exhibition in Indochina in general. From uh, some Vietnamese make films with very few, and in 1907, sorry, 1953, Vietnamese revolutionary cinema were born with the ultimate goal of supporting the national struggle for independence. I would like to highlight that parallel. Um, in parallel with the uh, revolutionary cinema in the North, under the communist regime, there existed a commercial cinema in the South from 1954 uh, to 1975. After the divide of North and Vietnam, according to the Geneva um, Accords, the, when the country unif reunified in 1975, after the fall of Saigon, Vietnamese cinema mostly maintained the socialist mythology of the revolutionary cinema. And, um, okay, this is the slide. And uh, during that time, Vietnamese faced the economic, ha economic hardship. The country went through a decade of poverty. Thus, in 1986, the Communist Party impl implemented an economic reform called Doi Mới or Renovation or Reform at the Sixth Party Congress. Vietnam, Vietnam shifted its subsidy economy to an open market economy and um, um, it is sometimes known as the capitalism with a socialist orientation. Since then, the country has undergone significant economic and political turns. The country became a member of the Association of Southeast Asian Nation in 1975 and then joined the World Trade Organization in 2008 and, 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 and seven. And importantly, the US signed the Trans-Pacific Partnership with Vietnam and other countries. According to this GD, the US and Vietnam could cooperate for the shake of economic development of the two countries. And this changes in terms of um, political and economic um, policies reflected in the way that Vietnamese film industry respond to uh, such, um, um, such, uh, such um, reform uh, policy. Uh, as you can see here, um, I only mentioned to, uh, to, 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 to facts that um, uh, related directly to the change of the way that Vietnamese film industry, you know, adapt to the new uh, context of um, post-reform Vietnam. The first one is the, in 1970s, 
1997, the government introduced the degree number 90 CP, known as the socialization of cultural and artistic activities, or xã hội hóa, hoạt động nghệ thuật, văn hóa và nghệ thuật. In, in 2002, um, the Ministry of Culture and Information passed new regulations that supported conditions for film production and institution, as seen in the decision number 38, 2002 QDPBATT. I will pause it here. The uh, list is long, but I'm um, just give you a sense of what is going on in terms of um, the legislative acts um, uh, that 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 help the 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 that help the 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 process of transformation of the Vietnamese film industry. And um, before the renovation, only states own studio assisted. And with the economic conditions changed and the laws adjusted, private companies were open and compared with the competed with the state-owned company. In 2000, commercial films are made by private studio outnumber those made by state-owned studios. And then uh, more importantly, state-owned studios had to change their making traditions to improve their competition with the private counterparts. And during this time, um, as many Vietnamese uh, audiences can uh, recount the event of bargains made in by uh, the liberation uh, studio or Zai Phong studio that launched the uh, film that embraced the commercial team of prostitution, uh, young youth and urbanization in Vietnam. This is a really big shift, and we can discuss later if you would love me to would like me to elaborate on that. And then the boom of commercial uh, filmmaking during this time, and then um, also during this time, you can uh, audiences witness the boom of noodle films. That is a video of film beyond Liam. Um, you can play two videos film. I didn't um, uh, incorporate or analyze the film, but uh, to get a sense that how the uh, artists like like New Queen have to you know adjust their not adjust but uh, participated in the new mode of filmmaking to 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 maintain material um, uh, condition for for their career. And while the state sector was in deep crisis economically, transnational movement of filmmaking developed in post-reform Vietnam would in turn change the landscape of the film, Vietnamese film industry. As film scholar Lan Xiong points out, Viet Kiều or diaspora artists were attracted by the open policy of the reform and the quote, state inclusion gesture, end quote, which means welcoming Vietnamese American talent in the inter entertaining and arts industry to return. Many artists such as Tony Bui, Victor Vu, and Charlie, among others, joined the emerging filmmaking industry and produced many box office successes. Um, paralleling this change in the film industry is the reshaping of workforces. And new, due to the financial cuts, many artists and crafts workers, technicians lost their job or seemingly maintain their job status, just uh, but saw the income reduce significantly. The structuring and configuration of film industry left marks on New Queen film careers, as we're gonna discuss later. And New Queen has to open a, 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 a cafe called Queen, named after her name, in the old quarter of Hanoi to financial, financially support her family. New Queen act economic cause situation as an actor parallels the Vietnamese film industry, but her professional development was not quite so. In the context of the crisis of the film industry and the start shortage of growth, New Queen made her entry into transnational co cooperative filmmaking, becoming one of the most popular Vietnamese actors on the international cinema landscape in early days of integration. Now I will turn to the second part of the, 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 the talk, which show the making and remaking of Vietnamese womanhood as traced in Yu Quinn character in uh, revisionist film. 
And before diving into how new queen characters speak volumes about Vietnamese cinema in the post reform Vietnam, it is important to grasp her casting in revolutionary films. There is a tendency to claim a sharp divine in terms of woman image in films in pre and post war Vietnam. The device usually includes the simple premise that revolutionary cinema refuses to portray individual human experiences while upholding an abstract perception of revolutionary ideals. The way Vietnamese cinema and art treat women is more as a symbol and less as a human with emotions in order to maintain heroism for the sake of national struggle. Meanwhile, post-war Vietnam, post-war cinema is seen as more reflective of the suffering and consequences of war and how individuals to uh, and how individual deal with the repressed and they conform to conform their politics to the part life line. However, as I point out elsewhere in my writing, in um, in, in my writing, I mean uh, my research on Vietnamese revolutionary cinema that challenged the Rus conclusion, a pre-diagnosed arcs of critic. Accordingly, wartime and post-war cinema are not readily contrastable. There are differences and continuities in the way that the various Vietnamese cinema portray women. New Queen multifaceted on screen image, well it demonstrates such continuities and the disruption of the notion of women in their relationships regarding romance, family, and nation. So um, her debut film is Song uh, to the Front, in which New Queen play Mice, a young compassionate nurse. Um, I show the poster of We Will Meet Again here because this is more uh, successful and somehow more important in the history of Vietnamese revolutionary cinema. But to give you a sense of um, how revolutionary cinema looks like, I would like to show you a clip of her debut um, so that you know um, you can have a, a, that kind of um, ambition. Let me show you. Okay, let me return to um, her uh, significant film before, I mean, like you have just watched the debut and it just gives you a glimpse of the image of Yu Queen in her 20s. And now I return to her significant film, Nate, uh, as Nate, character uh, protagonist in um, We Will, we will uh, Meet Again. What I would like to highlight here, um, Although I don't dive into the uh, details of the movie, is that the film moving beyond such a mere symbolic feature, the character of Nis is rebellious when viewed through her uh, courageous acts. She decided to run from the wedding on her wedding day, and she um, uh, Nis leaving her husband's house goes against the, her family orders and violates the Confucian ideology three obediences with my a wife to her husband for the rest of her life and endure an in show. So it indirectly challenges the patriarchy, um, patriarchal ideology of arranged marriage in a both term. As New Queen shared with me in her in an interview I conducted in 2018, in 2019, this is truly uh, is a truly con 
uh, courageous woman despite her feminine characteristics and traditional manners. If we understand her background as a traditional young and gentle woman living in a rural village under the French colonialism, highlighting this complexity of the Nate's character rather than simply reading it as a revolutionary illustrative character uh, in so dominant writing about revolutionary cinema, I want to draw the on. Uh, draw on the continuity between wartime, post-war, and even the post-reform films in terms of its multi-layered and dimensional depiction of womanhood. The reform resulted in the significant social cultural changes, which in turn influenced the themes of the film. Okay. Not only do the post-reform film depart from the conventional themes of new person fighting and laboring, but they also question the mainstream discourses that glorify the heroic past for the sake of mobilization, I'm sorry, for the sake of mobilizing people for the nation building. If wartime cinema's functionality is to serve the nation's fight for freedom, the later period reflects the struggling of vet veterans and supporters of revolutionary the revolution to integrate into the fast developing modernized society. If what time films showcase the people's heroism, selfishness, and sacrifice for each other and donation, the post war period films drive into the competition for good jobs, position, promotion, and money in the market driven society. When making films set in what time, different revisionists. Films seek to open and mediate on loss, pain, and design as a thread tightly and deeply weaving through the narrative. Um, New Film play a wide range role in the in important film project that tell stories about changing society in women deal with complex circumstances. In popular films, when you can play a role in period from 1975 to 1970. 1986, her character do not have a long lasting and happy relationships with the men they love. In a very early films about urban life set in Saigon, for example, The First Love, New Queen plays Yim Hương, a beautiful woman who has lived her sweet love for, and married a wealthy American man to save her family from death. In another romantic one, um, in Hanoi, in the bird's nesting season, New Queen character with a young woman six jobs opportunity in Hanoi after graduating to sacrifice her mother's wishes. Passively following her mother's plans, she um, she 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 searched her from her job adjustment in rural area. Meanwhile, her boyfriend is a delicate intellectual who wants to contribute to the nation building. We had finally, as you see in the uh, poster. Uh, fired boring job in Hanoi that her boyfriend leaves her for another woman who shared with him the, the more moral ethics of work. Nguyet in Hanoi in the bird nest season embodies the effects of market economy on women and their romantic relationship in urban areas. Nguyet embodies womanhood contrasts sharply with Nis, that is the film in We Will Meet Again, why Nis resists all of her will to marry a wealthy man and enjoy material life fulfillment. We'd want to live in a comfortable life in Hanoi. Why need plays plan to run away with her poor lover with refuses to join her boyfriend working in a rural province. A changing woman who signifies the changing, the changing social values. And other films, um, I just mentioned the name, uh, but don't uh, you know, analyze in detail here is Our Fate in, the, in 1978, acquired, A Night of Quietness, that is Damien in thing that are very um, less well-known or less popular film even in Vietnam. But for me, it's how a very uh, uh, signi significant position in New Queen films, which represent how women, um, on the one hand, are the agent of the new economy, um, uh, of the new, I'm sorry, uh, 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 an agent and a subject 
in the new setting, in the new uh, circumstances of post grief from Vietnam. But on the other hand, they're still in, in tension with the past where, war, where, in, where she was a victim in the war. Now I will move to the theme walk of the windows. Um, let me, um, unlike, let me see. Um, set in rural area during the war, as the title suggests, Wharf of Windows tell a story about women who lost their husband to the war or do not have a chance to get married as the village men go to the battlefront and sacrifice themselves. Their ages change from early to middle age and, and young women. And in this film, New Queen plays a, um, a, a second main role um with i will show you a clip and um, I, I analyze in detail later but according to dana Haley, the film departs from the patriotic paradigm laying bare women's suffering at home to highlight the gendered impact of war consequently quote move the discourse on war to the uncomfortable paradigms of loss pain and suffering end quote in fact, Wife of Both Widows um, and many popular post-1986 films while capturing women pins do not merely victimize them as Healy observes, I would argue. The woman in Wife of Widows painful, painfully experiences the consequences of war in their domestic lives, but not all of them surrender to the constraints circumstances, but instead, Desert Confucian morals and turn their back on the society convention, society's conventions. Let me show a clip to illustrate my point. Quần áo bác để ở ngoài xương nhiều lắm Nhà em mất cũng đã chục năm rồi Em thì đã đành Còn bác Thằng Tốn đã nhổ giò đòi đi bộ đội Mang Tiến là ở cùng nhà Mà chẳng mấy khi được nói chuyện với bác Sao bác không lấy vợ Đàn bà chết chồng mắt mọc sau lưng mà Ừ thì tôi nhìn thấy đấy Trước cái nhà bác này Lúc nào cũng súng với ông Em cứ nghĩ bác với mẹ cái hạnh Chị đã nói cho cẩn thận không thì tôi Thì ông làm gì Bắn tôi á Thôi chị bước ra khỏi nhà tôi Nhà tôi Nói 
chuyện với con vợ địa chủ Ở mất lập trường chứ gì Mấy năm tôi ở cái nhà này Tôi có sống không? Tôi có phải là con hủi không? Không phải <cười> Sorry. Okay. So in this film, you can character Hun is a widow. Uh, Hun like others husband who died for the national cause. Her husband is a landlord who is executed in the land reform Cambridge. Hun is emotionally and sexually attracted to one, the male protagonist, the veteran who is assigned to live in Hon's house, while Hun and her son have to move to live in the kitchen. New Queen acting and facial gestures reveal the character's love for and sexual exerting for Van, more than simply showing windows, quote, sexual frustration, as Jana Healy said as an act to oppose to the taboo of the openly discussing female sexuality. The theme open also acknowledges women rebellion in their bold effort of satisfying their emotional and sexual needs. Hearn finds every single chance to seduce one, even implicitly offer her body to him and be injected. The theme the film openly portrays women's sexualities, sexual designs, and present women like her and her a younger uh, woman as a film protagonist, and the other female protagonist, other female characters as active agents who are unwilling to settle down with the traditional ideology of Confucian chastity. And more importantly, in the case of her, she even challenges the social hierarchy and reactionary class stigma attached to her background in pursuit of her need for love and sex. And now I will move on and talk briefly about her um, new pink career in the uh, transnational landscape. And the films that I would like to uh, uh, introduce here is the vertical ray of, 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 of the sun. Um, this is in this film uh, set in contemporary Hanoi, vertical right of the sun central around three sisters in the middle class family. And Yu Queen character Shun is the early, in her early 30s, had a passionate affair. The film explicitly shows her sexual and somehow bizarre romantic and erotic scenes between her and her lover. She never speaks the words despite her lover insisting and begging for it. This non-talking challenged the very conventional ideas of unspeakable or voiceless woman in the discourse about stereotypes of woman's sexuality, despite uh, especially traditional Han, traditional Hanonian ones. So um, just to give you a sense of how she plays a very untraditional woman in um, Chen Anh Ho film. And uh, the last point that I would um, like to bring, bring up and I don't think we have a, a, a lot of time here. So I, I just want to zoom in this uh, part. It is an ongoing research of mine. It's about uh, creative label in globalization era embodied through um, new queen character. So um, as I introduced, new queen play some significant uh, films and Inochin is one of them. Given that New Queen appear in the most the highly acclaimed films just mentioned, some questions deserve to be considered carefully here that I would like to ask. How did New Queen benefit from performing in this film, even though her presence is not quite visible to the international audiences and her performances were not adequately recognized? What was her position in the film crew? As experienced actor and popular film star in Vietnam, did she have a chance to present her opinion about the filmmaking and her role beside the quality of her well-known Vietnamese authentic star image? Answering this question offering, offers insights on the power distribution in the collaborations and the subjectivities 
of local third world authors in market economy era. In the case of New Green, these questions are even more crucial to understanding the intersecting issues of labor, collaborative filmmaking, gender, and globalization in the complex cities rather than ready uh, assum assumptions about description disruption to filmmaking tradition or the subordination of Vietnamese cinema. In Indochine, New Queen characters shall appears less than 10 minutes. Um, and this film is about a epic life of a French female owner of a few rubber plantation and her enemy's daughter, Camille, the protagonist in Southern Vietnam in the 1980s, just as other Vietnamese character and the local landscape are used to highlight the French colonization and the filmmakers nostalgia for the glorious colonial past. New Queen Charles serves as a catalyst for Camille rebellious acts killing the French officer in the dragon land on her way to fighting her lover. The climax occurs after we learn that Camille left her mother and newly married husband in Saigon. Meanwhile, South family is depicted in a very brief way, escaping from the road building company under brutal condition. We on, um, be, being divided, South family resisted and used their crying to resist at the French officer restated when they are killed. The dead body of the four people in the family are put in the wooden, in the wooden cage and put in the river. We only see the head sticking out of the cage, like you see here, above the water in sitting pose. Our process of killing are, as well as the rebellions are told by the French uh, officer. So characters, um, the scene highlights the villainy of the French and colonization and makes use of the spectacle of Vietnamese suffering without giving them a chance to present or speak for themselves. They are dead and their brutally killed dead body is weaved into the narrative, muted to develop the narrative about Camilla's shooting and then shed up a reason for her running away with French lover in a romantic um, thrill matter. Character, South character um, could have been less abstract if the filmmaker took into the consideration of New Queen's suggestion. New Queen said that in an interview, Oriental woman, especially in the historical era, always think of husband and children. And if there is something woman wants to share, the first person she thinks of is her husband. According to New Queen, the director considered her attraction to see so seriously and eventually agree to thank her. However, the film did not turn out that way, at least in the version that I watched. New Queen might have misinterpreted the director respond when she suggested to change the uh, actors of sounds in the uh, chasing scene. And there may be a chance that the director gets a polite acceptance on the set, or he agree, but then change his mind in the editing phase. Whatever the situ situation was, you can raise her voice, taking her small role seriously, determined to enrich her character in subtle but meaningful way. Um, why the abandonment of New Queen creative invent intervention speak to the predictably unequally power in the film crew gathering toward her other dimension of such as gender and race, the um, condition do not simply demonstrate New Queen's low position. Considered from a professional perspective with New Queen daring to raise I'm sorry, I just set the, um, the, the, the timer uh, so that I can, I can stop it on time, but I have a time right here. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Okay. Um, moreover, although her acting, her voice and her fame were not recognized in Inoshin, it is a film that helped her get cast in the subsequent, subsequent co-produced films that brought her achievement and honor 
her performance style in a way that enabled her to endure the significant changes of Vietnam cinema in response to uh, globalization. And the turning point of her acting style is cyclo. And as I have a discussed, the label boss, um, as I haven't mentioned, the film is very important and successful. It's won the Venice, um, the go go Golden Lion in Venice Film Festival. And in this film, she play a lady boss, uh, which is very different New Queen casting type. From an acting perspective, New Queen highlighted in the interview with me that she learned a lot from working with Chen Anh Hong, presenting an unconventional woman in a certificated manner. She highlighted the standard that she adopted and transformed her um, career. There is a clip here I would like to show you. And um, I would end um, after the clips uh, so that you can see, uh, just give you a sense like how uh, she acting is along with a very famous Hong Kong film actor, uh, Tony Leung Chua, right? And the success of Cyclo and the significant transformation of her performance, as you can see in this sequence, brought New Queen opportunities to other co-productions and other transnational projects. She appears in The Bride of Silence in 2005, another art film by Viet Kiel. And one year later, she was invited to be uh, in a Chinese film, The Chinese Botanist Daughters in 2006, and Hadong Siu Dress in two and then in 2006 too, and her entry on two television production, Mark My Golden Bride, a co-production between Korea and Vietnam and won the uh, Audience Choice Award for the mother role. Why the show was not popular in Vietnam, the award brought a reminder of new queen talents to the public as if it is a signal that Vietnamese actors have acquired international performance standards. So uh, for my uh, conclusion here, it's really brief. My research focused on um, the woman's role in um, place in post-reform Vietnam film industry and global cinema. And I would like to, and during my talk, I emphasize two main things. The first one is the complexities of women characters on screen. And the second one, the process that she negotiated um, a global, in the global film industry 
um, and um, take advantages of the changing politics of Bossy from Vietnam and transform her career. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gui Her. And now I would like to uh, uh, welcome any questions from the audience. As we wait for uh, some questions to come in, uh, probably uh, it would be um, uh, uh, my privilege to just uh, chip in some questions here. Uh, I. Uh, as you know, um, a person who uh, do uh, Vietnamese cultures, and actually this semester I have uh, an opportunity to teach some uh, a course uh, related to Vietnamese film, um, and um, I would like to to learn a little bit more about New Queen's career, career um, the, especially the shift uh, throughout the um, the the uh, Mo period. Um, so, what is um, um, in terms of the 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 kind of uh, women characters that she she uh, taken after uh, the Dormo period, what exactly uh, for you means the revolutionary image of the the masses about the women image in the film that she tried to to you know deliver to the audience, uh, and uh, uh, after that uh, very brief uh, questions, we have uh, a couple of questions coming here, so probably you give uh, just a. Uh, some seconds for that response. Why um, mm -hmm. I go through the just yeah. Sure. So um, thank you for the question. Actually, this is really good one, and it's with um, nicely um, my presentation. Um, I think the 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 the, the most um, outstanding uh, characteristic of her performance is the way that she represents the ideas of rebellious woman in the. Uh, pre-war uh, era, she presented in a way that is more constant. And it's kind of represent that kind of the spirit of that era, right? And then in the post-war era, she still, as I argue, embraced the ideas that women has that kind of rebellion rather than, you know, su suppressed. But in a more um, bold way, in because this is uh, embodied through the sexual desire and sexual, um, you know, in, in that way that they have a more freedom to express that, at least uh, for many filmmakers, they show that more, uh, you know, openly and in a more um, bold sense. Thank you. And I, I think here we have uh, some questions that I say uh, really uh, uh, hook up with the conversation we are having here. Um, uh, first of all, two questions from Eric Hams. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, uh, asking, um, posing the questions. And I think I'm going to also compile with uh, questions uh, from Lam Phuong Nguyen Phat. Um, uh, and, uh, I can put the questions by uh, Lam Phuong first uh, because it's kind of broad. Uh, what exactly the reasons why you uh, choose to examine New Queen's career? And mm -hmm. following that, um, uh, Eric have uh, questions for you uh, about comparing revolutionary seminar of the 1970s to post uh, Doi Mui cinema how does one separate what elements of difference are revolutionary from say what elements that are reflexant of 1970s film convention uh, any uh, thing related to you know camera techniques or you know what kind of uh, before it is ideology uh, issues but later it's more like other aspects uh, like material condition or global film trends and any comments about the change that related to you know the actress age as well yeah okay thank you for the questions um let me go to the first question first why new queen career in particular um there are uh, a couple reasons but let me um put out the, the, the most important one is she, her career, New Queen's career is the most prolific, prolific career uh, compared to socialist film star in 1970s. Um, 
I wrote about Jia Zhang, that is a legendary socialist star uh, career, and her career ended in 1990s uh, because in the interview she said that she couldn't follow the new norms of the fasting pace of, um, of filmmaking in the new era. And for me, on the one hand, it's really, you know, that is the very um, personal perspective, um, reflect the, the way that 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 um, artists adapt to the new uh, condition of filmmaking, right? And this speaks a lot to uh, to 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 New Green career when a career when an actor like New Green try to adapt herself, take advantages of it, and try to make every single effort. On the one hand, maintain you know her her life through you know open a, a cafe. On the other hand, try to play a minor role like Sao in Indochin. For me, it's fascinating. It's fascinating when you think about the labor in the perspective during the globalized era. Many people lost job. They cannot, and especially in the creative, um, cultural production, and it's it's big for me. The the place of woman in 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 the film industry, which is dominantly male uh, filmmakers or technicians or 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 or, or other uh, professions. That is the first question. The second question um, for Eric, what is the most revolutionary characteristics? That is really uh, interest, very, very interesting questions. I haven't thought of like, which one is really revolutionary? Uh, I haven't thought of in the very specific sense uh, because this is when we talk about films, we talk about uh, the themes, we talk about the uh, aesthetics, we talk about the techniques, right? And um, I look at in particular uh, for this period in that is the film industry. And for me, the, the change here is like with the, the reform era is, is, is make the, it diversifies the Vietnamese film industry. And that is from um, industrial perspective, but from the aesthetics uh, perspectives, um, this is the, 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 the transition um, before, uh during the war era although the methodology is socialist uh, realism methodology um, many filmmakers actually adopt italian neorealism new wave, french new wave in an avant-garde spirit somehow and this is under uh, research um, of the vietnamese revolutionary cinema so is this is this cannot talk about the unified um, aesthetics or film techniques in this sense, right? But in the post-war era, I think when they adopt the Artur cinema, like Chen Anh Hung, it's, a, it's just a, one example, the Artur cinema, when they linger on the technology innovation, they can they, 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 they adopt, for example, the long text, right? Some film techniques, the long text, the deep focus, so that they can um, represent or capture, I could say, the reality in your more nuanced sense without the interfere or without the intervention of the, the, the filmmaker. So for that aspect, is this something that can say that is revolutionary, but not quite because, because as I pointed out during the revolutionary cinema, some film director like Hai Ning adopted that. It, but is this put in the context of revolutionary cinemas. So that's why it's not something that's standing down. But when you uh, you analyze the film shots, you're gonna see they adopt that in a in a very subtle sense. Um, for that question, I may we may have a, the conversation later because we, sh we, 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 we our office is so close, right? So um, mm, I would say is this further um, you know refine the argument and with with perspective that 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 um, the, 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 the 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 with perspective that we 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 take gonna present a different um, opinion on that on that uh, for that answer. Thank you so much, Kui uh, Thanks so much for the audience. Uh, if you have uh, further questions or interested in this topic, uh, I believe that uh, Kui Hai will welcome you to contact her. Uh, her profile is on um, the um, 
uh, Macmillan Southeast Asian Studies at Yale University. Uh, and I really, really wish that uh, some of you here will share more uh, studies or interest in the film industries in Vietnam, especially in post um, reform period where we are seeing so much change. Thank you again for uh, your time uh, on a Friday uh, noon. Uh, and also thank you for our team here, Jonathan, uh, who have helped this um, uh, webinar possible. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Hugh, and thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, everyone, for joining me. I really appreciate that. If you have any, any questions, feel free to email me. Thanks.